Bushra says, what is the concept of giving Fatiha on food? Is this permissible? Well, Bushra, Muslims, as stated before many times, they're either extreme or negligent. And this is the doing of shaitan. Real Muslims are in the middle path, following the Quran, the Sunnah. That's why they're always steadfast. They never change. They don't have many faces. Those who are not well-founded on Islam, those who are deviant, you will find them camouflaging. One year they say something, the following year they change. They adopt another opinion. And you see them flopping from one place to the other. Now, some would say that this is how fiqh evolves. No, Akhi, this has nothing to do with the evolution of fiqh. This has to do with how you change and flip sides depending on the current. So how is everybody doing? If the pressure is so great, I can budge. I may be willing to change a little bit. Those who work according to the Quran and Sunnah, they're always steady. Rarely you will find them change their colors for the highest bidder. Therefore, Bushra, you have to look into how shaitan works. Is he tending to have people go to extreme or to be negligent? When people love Islam, shaitan comes to them and innovates things, makes make them extreme. He tries to bring things that are not part of the deen and convincing them that they're getting closer to Allah by that. And this is what's happening. Fatiha, the greatest chapter in the Quran, no doubt about it. Did the Prophet recite it before going to bed? No. Should we do it? Well, it's the greatest surah in the Quran. Why not? No, Akhi. I'll tell you why not. If the Prophet didn't do it and you think that you're doing something better than him or you know more than him, what more evil do you need to be to be an advocate of shaitan? So the Prophet didn't do it, you should not do it. When did the Prophet recite Fatiha in Ruqya? He approved, as in the Hadith of Abu Sa'id al-Khudri, people to read it in Ruqya. So it's the best Ruqya around. Where else? In the Salat. Where else? That's it. What do you mean by that's it? We Muslims read Fatiha whenever there is a marriage contract being conducted. So after we propose and they accept, say, okay, Al-Fatiha. This is an innovation. What? All Muslims do it. Akhi, listen to me. Read my lips. If the Prophet did not do it, if it's not mentioned in the Quran, if not mentioned in the Sunnah, it's an innovation. Even if the whole earth is doing it, it remains an innovation. Did the Prophet ever do it? No. Did the companions ever do it? No. It's an innovation. End of story. Okay, but we also do it whenever we remember someone who died. So my uncle died last week. Oh, may Allah forgive him. Let's read the Fatiha for him. Why would you read the Fatiha for him? Well, this is what everybody else is doing. Innovation. Bid'ah. Come on, Shaykh. Everything is bid'ah. Akhi, either you bring me evidence from the Quran or the Sunnah, and I'll read it with you. Or it is a bid'ah. So now this cascaded to all forms of, of, of our life. Now people, mothers prepare food and they recite the fatiha and they make you eat it. What are you doing? He said, for barakah. Okay, why don't you read Surah Al-Ikhras as well? He said, yeah, why not? Why don't you read Al-Baqarah? The food will be cold. You, you decided to open this Pandora box for innovation. What are you doing? So people 
are listening to shaitan and following his footsteps. You as a Muslim, it is your duty to cleanse all of these inherited thoughts and practices from your fathers and forefathers and look at them through the filter of Quran and Sunnah. If it is not existing in the Quran or in the Sunnah, throw it into the garbage and don't look back.